Hey guys, in this video, the brilliant Mr. B is going to be taking you through prime numbers. So the sort of things you're going to be coming across in exam questions and how to answer those. If you want more examples, then there are thousands of questions waiting for you over on my website in multiple choice questions and in Before we list the prime numbers, we need to know what prime numbers are. So a prime number is defined as a number with two factors. Now, what the factor means is that the number can only be divided by two different numbers. And more precisely, the two numbers are, have to be whole numbers. So you can't say you can divide a number by a decimal and that's a factor. Factors have to be whole numbers. So let's look at a few examples. So let's look at the number six. Be nice and systematic, follow a system, and start with the smallest numbers and work your way up. So first we'll say, what is six divided by one? Six divided by one is six, that's a whole number. So one is a factor of six. Then we can look at six divided by two. Six divided by two is three. So two is a fact six. Then six divided by three. Six divided by three is two. So three is a factor of six. And I hope you notice that six divided by two is three and six divided by three is two are kind of the reverse of each other. And that means that the number you're dividing by and the answer are also factors. And we go back to, well, six divided by one was six. The answer six was also a factor because if you do the calculation the other way around, six divided by six is one. Now we've got up to the number itself six. So we finished our list and you can see that six has got four factors. So six is not a prime number. It has four factors. Prime numbers only have two factors. Now let's look at eight simples. So eight divided by one is eight so one is a factor and eight is a factor and again a reminder eight divided by eight is one so both the dividing number and the answer will both be factors if they are whole numbers so we've done one let's move up to two eight divided by two is four so two and four are factors and then Eight divided by three. Well, in the three times table, you have three, six, and nine. That misses out eight, so three is not a factor of eight. Then we move up to four, and you'll notice we already have four in the list. So once you start repeating yourself, you know that you have finished. So eight has got four factor. So eight is not a prime number. Now I'm going to look at five. So smallest numbers, checking every single number. Five divided by one is five. So one and five uh, factors. Five divided by two is two and a half. And we don't have decimal numbers in here. Um, so that will not be a factor. They have to be whole numbers. Five divided by three. Well, five isn't in the three times table. Five divided by four same thing not in the four times table and then five divided by five i'm repeating myself so i know that i finished my list now you'll see that five does have exactly two factors so five is a prime number now you might think to yourself we've done three numbers so far you can see i've got a grid with a hundred numbers up on the page the method takes a little bit of time and we have some much larger numbers which usually have many more factors so are we going to be here all day finding out what all the prime numbers are? Well, we're not. And the reason why I have this grid is going to show you a shortcut and a way to discover all the factors very quickly. It's not something you can use in the exam. You don't want to be drawing out this grid in the exam. But it is a way to figure out the prime numbers and start to memorise them, which will be a little bit faster than checking each number individually. Now, there's no nice equation or formula to find uh, the prime numbers. So what we need to do is find numbers that are not prime, which is a lot easier. And then any number that's left over must be a prime number. Before we start, a really important thing to mention, 
one can be divided by one. And yeah, the answer is one, but you only have one number there. One is a factor of one. It has one factor. It is not a prime number. Prime numbers have got two factors. So to start our method, we're going through each number one at a time. We've looked at one already, so let's look at two. Two is a prime number. You can divide it by one and you can divide it by two. It has two factors. Now, what this means is any other number in a two times table cannot be a prime number because they can, every single number in the two times table can be divided by two. So that means that if a number can be divided by one and every number can be divided by one, and a number can be divided by itself, and every number can be divided by itself, then if they can also be divided by two, that will give you a third factor, which means they are not prime numbers. Now we've, now we've looked two, at two and, and the two times table and decided that two is our first prime number. We are now going to have a lot of three. So three is a prime number as well. It can be divided it can, can't be divided by two, but it can be divided by three, so it has two factors. Now, just like the two times table, everything else in the three times table cannot be a prime number because all those numbers can be divided by one, like all numbers can. It can be divided by itself, like all numbers can. And they can also be divided by three, which means they have at least three factors. So three is a prime number, but the rest of the times table isn't. I'm going to colour those in now. Okay, so we've done one, two, and three. We move on to four. You'll notice we've already colored four in, and four is part of the two times table. So four cannot be a prime number. And we don't need to color in the four times table because every number in the four times table is even, so it's also in the two times table. So four's already done for us. Then moving on to five, we already checked five at the start, and we know that five is a prime number. It can be divided by one and five. And now we're going to colour in the five times table. You'll notice that's much more much quicker than the two and three times tables. Moving on to six, that's already coloured in, so that is not going to be a prime number. Then moving on to seven, uh, we can divide seven by one, and the answer is seven, so that's two factors for us. And we haven't coloured it in for the two, three, or five times tables, so it can't be divided by those numbers either. So seven must be a prime number. And then, like we did before, I'm going to colour in the times table. So let's colour in the seven times table. Now we finish the sevens, we'll see the eights, nines, and tens have already been eliminated. Next, we'll look at the 11 times table. Now, all the numbers in the 11 times table, apart from 11, have already been eliminated. In lots of pattern of when we come to a number and it's not been coloured in yet, it will be a prime number. We can double check it. So you can try to divide 11 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. But 11 does only have two factors 1 and 11. 12 has already been done for us, so moving on to 13. Again, 13 will be a prime number. You could check, but I will tell you that the entire 13 times table has already been eliminated as well. And actually, just to save a bit of time, every single number that hasn't been coloured in yet is a prime number. And we actually have finished our method already. So we only have to check four different times tables to identify all the prime numbers below 100. Now, the question just say, list the prime numbers, implying all of them, but they do go on forever, so we're just going to limit ourselves to the prime numbers underneath 100. Take a look to see if you can see any patterns, and I'm just going to write them all down in a neat list now, and take this as an opportunity to perhaps write them down yourself, and try and memorise as many as possible. Moving on to the medium questions, we're going to be finding numbers which two primes have a product of. Now, what product means is just multiplication. So you want two prime numbers that multiply to give the numbers that are stated. So, so if two numbers multiply together to make an answer, then those numbers will also divide into the answer. And this is what we're going to do to find our method. So with our first question, 14, if we can find one prime number that divides into 14, then the answer will be the other prime number 
that will make 14 with it. First thing to do is check if a number is even and 14 is even. So 14 can be divided by two. Now 14 divided by two is seven, which is also a prime number. So the product of two and seven is 14 and they are both prime numbers. So that's our answer. Another easy thing to check for question two is we can see it's not even, so we can't divide it by two, but it does end in a five and any numbers that end in a five or a zero can be divided by five. So we know that five, which is a prime number, is a factor of 35. And 35 divided by five is seven. So we know that five times five, they're both prime numbers and the product is 35. Question three has another easy thing to check. So we see that 77 is not even, so it can't be divided by two. It doesn't end in a five or a zero, so it can't be divided by five, but we have repeated numbers. And if you have two digit number for repeating numbers, then you know it can be divided by 11. 11 is a prime number, so it'll be a factor of 77. 77 divided by 11 is seven, Again, a prime number. So the product of 11 and seven is 77. Now for 51, we can't really see any easy shortcuts here. It's not even, it doesn't end in a five or a zero. It's not a repeating number. So what we need to do in this situation is just try and divide it by every single prime number, starting with the smallest ones. So we'll start off dividing 51 by three. I'll use the bus stop method. So how many threes go into five? One three goes into five with two left over. How many threes go into 21? Seven. Exactly. So 51 divided by three is 17. And because that's a whole number, and we can see that 17 is also a prime number, we've got our answer straight away. So we've been quite lucky. 51 is a product and 17. Moving on to the last medium question, 119. Again, I can't see any easy shortcuts here, so we're just going to try and divide it by every number. So it's not even, so we're not going to divide it by two. So let's divide it by three. If you have it, then you're welcome to use a calculator. I would do it this way, though, to prepare yourself for doing it without a calculator exam. So how many threes go into one? Zero. Carry the one. How many threes go into 11? Three. And three times three is nine. So we have two more left over to get to 11. Carry the two. And how many threes go into 29? Well, three times nine is 27. So nine threes go in and we have a remainder two. This means that this is not going to be a whole number answer. I still have leftover numbers and I've already got a two-digit number anything else is going to go into decimals. So this is not going to give us uh, an answer. So we can't divide 119 by three. Let's move on to the next number. Well, we know it's not going to be five. It doesn't end in a five or a zero. So let's try dividing by seven. So how many sevens go into one? Zero, carry the one. How many sevens go into 11? One seven will fit into 11. And then it's four more from seven up to 11, carry the four. And then how many sevens go into 49? Seven, and we have no remainders. So we have 17 exactly as our answer. So we found it, 119 is a product of seven and 17. Now for the third questions, we'll look at the sum of two primes. And it's important to know that sum just means add. So we're looking for two prime numbers which add up to the numbers stated. So the best way to do these is to have a little bit of working out. So we're looking at 16 first. So just go through the list of prime numbers and see how you can sum up to 16. So our first prime number is 2. So 16 would be 2 plus 14. And 14 isn't a prime number, so that's not going to work for us. Then we can look at the 3. 16 would be 3 plus 13, 
So let me check if 13 is a prime number and you can refer to your memory. You can refer to the list if you've written out a list or you could check 13 itself and try and divide it by one, by two, by three, by four and seeing how many factors it has. But we know that 13 is a prime number. So 16 is the sum of thir uh, three plus 13. Moving on to 12, we'll use the same method. So we'll start with the smallest prime number two. 12 would be two plus 10 number, so it's not a prime number. Then let's move on to three. 12 would be three plus nine. And nine is also not a prime number. It can be divided by one, three, and nine. It has three factors. So what's next? Five. So 12 would be five plus seven. Seven is a prime number. So 12 is the sum of five plus seven. Question three is 20. So we'll try this multiple prime number first. 21 would be two plus 19. And we can see from Alice that 19 is a prime number. So we've got our answer straight away. 21 is two plus 19. Okay, now for 30. Now I'm gonna skip the obvious ones. So I know that 30 will be two and 28, which are both even numbers. So I'll skip on to starting with three. So 30 will be three plus 27. Now 27, it's not in my list. It's actually in the three times table. It's three times nine. It's got quite a few factors. So that's not what we're looking for. Now, again, we get to five. I know that 30 will be five and 25. 25 is a square number, it can be divided by five. So I'm not even gonna bother writing that one down. Let's move on to seven. 30 would be 7 plus 23. And I see that 23 is in my list of prime numbers. So that's what I'm looking for. So 30 is the sum of 7 plus 23. Our final question is 60. Again, I'll skip the obvious ones. So 60 would be 2 and 58. 58 is even, so that won't be prime number. Then let's have a look at a three and I'll get an odd number out of this one. So 60 will be three plus 57. 57 is not in our list, so that's not a prime number. Then five, again, five is usually pretty obvious. Uh, it'd be five plus 55 and 55 can be divided by five, so it won't be a prime number. Let's look at seven. 60 will be 7 plus 53. Uh, is 53 in our list? Yes, it is. So that's our answer. 60 is 7 plus 53. Now, it's probably unlikely you'll memorize 53 as being a prime number. So if this number did come up, just remember to check through all the factors, try to divide it by 2, by 3, by 5, by 7. And if you just check the first four, then you're probably going to get a good idea if it's a prime number or not.